Hello, new social scientists, and welcome back to Statistics with a New Social Scientist. Today, we're going to talk about data management using SPSS. So similar to what we did last time, we're going to open up a data file, we're going to play around with the metadata, and get things in order so that we can conduct meaningful analyses using SPSS. So the first thing that you want to do is open up SPSS. So to do that, navigate to our working directory folder, and then we double click on our SPSS database. So once we have our SPSS database loaded, what we do is we click on the variable view tab. So variable view, once again, shows us all of the metadata about the values we entered into our data set. So if you click on the data view tab, what we're gonna see is a spreadsheet full of data values. Now, each one of these columns of data represent a variable, so a question asked on the fear of crime survey. Now, in addition to having these columns of variables, we can record information about each one of these variables. So some of that includes simple things like the name of the column, as well as more complicated things, such as the label of the column. Now, in addition to changing the names as well as the column labels, what we can do is we can adjust the data type as well as the level of measurement. So if we look at this column here titled data type, this data type indicates SPSS, the type of information that is stored within the column. So in this course, we've really only talked about entering numbers into SPSS. However, it's also possible to enter characters, so text, so words and phrases. Now, in this course, we're primarily working with numbers. So what we want to do is just look at this column and make sure that SPSS has guessed correctly the correct data type. So remember, we never want to trust software. We always want to just double check and make sure that SPSS is doing everything that we want it to do. So if we look at this column type, we can see that all of the values indicate numeric. So in this course, that's exactly what you want to see. So if you see anything different, what you'll want to do is click on this cell, and you'll see this box appear with three dots. We'll click on that box, and you'll get this dialog box here. So this window will show you a number of different options, a number of different data types that you could use. Again, in this course, we only want it to be set to numeric, so we click the radio button next to numeric, and then we click OK, and we're good to go. The next thing that we want to update are the level of measurement. So if we go to this column here titled Measure, we can see that SPSS did not know what kind of information that we entered into the Data View tab. So every question has a level of measurement to it. So in the course lectures, we talked about different levels of measurement. So we have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So it's important that when we're conducting our analyses, that the software we're using recognizes each of our variables using the correct level of measurement. So if we have the incorrect level of measurement, then SPSS might decide that certain statistical analyses are not available to us. So we want to be able to use all of the powerful tools that are available in SPSS. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that all of the variables are specified as having the correct level of measurement. So the way we change these levels of measurement is we go up to the cell within the column measure, and we select the correct level of measurement. So if you click on the cell, SPSS is going to give you three options. So the first option is going to be scale, the second is ordinal, and the third is nominal. So in SPSS, nominal and ordinal, these are exactly as we talked about in the class lecture. However, instead of making a difference between interval and ratio level, SPSS just calls them all scale. So in this course, you'll often hear me talk about the difference between interval and ratio level measures, and on the exams, we will distinguish between these two different measurement level types. However, when it comes to SPSS, there's only one level of measurement for our continuous variables, and that's the scale level of measurement. So 
In SPSS, what we do is we go to the cell, and for each of our variables, we select the appropriate level of measurement. So here what we can do is we can bring up the Campus Sphere of Crime Survey. So here we have our first set of questions. So all these questions have to do with how safe people feel uh, walking around Southeastern at different times of day. Now, we can look at each one of these questions. We can see that respondents were given only five options to choose from. So these options ranged from strongly agree to strongly disagree. So we have five levels uh, ranging from strongly agree to strongly disagree. So we can see that strongly agree is greater than agree, which is greater than neutral, which is greater than disagree, which is greater than strongly disagree. While we know that these levels are different from each other, we don't, however, know how much they differ from each other. So because we're in this situation, we can recognize that this variable was measured at the ordinal level of measurement. So with that knowledge, what we can do is we can go back to SPSS, and we can change the level of measurement for this question to the ordinal level of measurement. Now what we can do is we can go to each of the different levels of measurement for each of these variables and change them to the ordinal level. Now when it comes to the second set of questions asked, these were all about how worried people were about various types of crimes. Now if we look at this survey response, we can see that Respondents could enter in a value of either never, rarely, sometimes, very often, or always. So again, we're in a situation where respondents were asked to indicate how worried they were about crime using an ordinal level of measurement. So again, we might not know how much larger always is from very often, but we do know that always is greater than often. So given this information, what we can do is we can go back to SPSS and we can change the level of measurement for all of these questions to the ordinal level of measurement. Now there's a third question that was asked as part of the fear of crime survey, and that was, have you ever been the victim of crime? Now respondents could either enter a yes or a no. So this type of variable is known as a dichotomous variable. So it only takes on one of two different levels, either a yes or a no. Now when it comes to defining the level of measurement for this variable, the solution is a little more art than science. So in this case, you really need to think about the type of question being asked. So if the question clearly defines two different groups, where one is not more than the other, then you want to set it to nominal. However, if the question defines more or less than of something, then you want to set it to ordinal. So if we look at, have you ever been the victim of crime? We could think of it as being how much prior crime victimization people have experienced. So if you've experienced no prior crime victimization, then you get a zero. And if you've experienced some prior crime victimization, then you get a one. So in this class, we're going to read this question as falling under that ordinal level of measurement. So here, we use this question to indicate more or less prior victimization with crime. So then we go back to SPSS, and then for our prior victimization, we can change that to an ordinal level. Now there are three final questions asked as part of the Fear of Crime survey. And that was asking respondents to identify their academic class standing, their gender identity, as well as their racial slash ethnic identity. So we can look at the response categories for the variable academic class standing. And we see that there could be freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors, as well as some other category. Now, in most situations, we might treat this type of variable as a ordinal level of measurement. And we would do that because clearly freshman is less than sophomore, sophomore is less than junior, and junior is less than senior. However, because this variable includes an other category, it makes it difficult to take all these categories and put them in order. Should other come before freshmen? Should other come after seniors? It's not clear. 
So because of this uncertainty, what we do is we're going to treat this variable as though it were measured on the nominal level of measurement. Similarly, we're going to consider gender and race as being measured on the nominal level of measurement. So intuitively, we can think about gender and we can say, well, for the most part, people either fall into one of three categories. They're either male, female, or some other gender identity. When it comes to these three categories, one does not necessarily come before the other one. So female does not come before male, and male does not come before other. Another way of thinking about this is in terms of quantities. So when we think about different gender identities, we can't talk about one as having more gender than another one. So males are not more gendered than females, or people who identify in some other way. So based on this logic, the level of measurement for this variable should be at the nominal level of measurement. Now we can take the same logic and apply it to the variable race. So here we have these six different racial categories, ranging from Asian, Black, American Indian, slash Alaska Native, Hawaiian Native, slash Pacific Islander, White, and then Other. Again, if we think about race, we recognize that it doesn't make sense to talk about race in terms of quantities. So Asians don't have more race than white people, neither do black people have more race than Pacific Islanders. So since it doesn't make sense to talk about quantities in terms of race, we can recognize that this variable is going to be measured at the nominal level of measurement. So we take this information and we go back to SPSS and we identify each of these three remaining categories as being measured at the nominal level of measurement. Okay, so that's it for today. So what we've done is we've continued our discussion about data management using SPSS. So we've taken our metadata for each of our columns of variables, and we've made sure that one, they were set to the correct data type, and two, that they were set to the correct level of measurement. So now that we're in this situation, we can really start getting into this idea of conducting statistical analyses based off of our data using SPSS. Okay, see you next time.